this is Lori with uh, Coast to Coast Craft Girls coming to you from the West Coast. Today I'm going to show you a really neat card. It's kind of a, a interesting take on an easel card. It's kind of a vertical easel, so it sits this way. And that sentiment just kind of floats right there. Um, now I can't take credit for coming up with this. I actually saw this made on uh, Sam Calcott's YouTube channel, so I want to give her credit for that. But I loved it so much, and it really showcases when you have really beautiful paper. It does fold basically flat for, for shipping or for mailing like that. But you can pop that easel up, and it's just really, really pretty. So I'm going to make one today out of with a little bit different papers, but we'll set that off to the side. So today I decided to use the... Uh, Fairy Garden paper pad. I love this paper pad. It's really pretty and I've already kind of chopped it down, but this is a 12 by 12 sheet and this is the back side, which I'm going to use for the stopper, but um, I'm going to use this on the front and then put this in the inside and this coordinating really dark, almost a plummy purple color, I think really sets it off nicely. So let me show you how to make it. Those are my mats and layers, so I'm going to set that off to start. Start with a 6x6 six by six, uh, six by six, uh, card blank. What you're going to do is on the front, so you open it up, and if you can see here on this one, we basically scored across the middle like a normal easel card, and then one inch from each corner, put a little mark, and then we're going to score the diamond and then cut and score across that center part so that that folds back. If you look at the inside, you can kind of see how it folds. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start by making our easel just a standard easel card. So let me get my scoring tool out here. So this is six, so we want to go right at the three inch line and score. And it's best to score lightly, at, but you know, just a couple of different times. So you're going to score all the way across and that's this fold. Okay. So now we want to come one inch in from each edge and score um, and cut across there and then bend and score these corners. Okay, so let's take, just take a little pencil. It's probably the easiest. The first thing we want to do is mark halfway so we know where to go. I guess I can just do it on my scoreboard. That might be easier. So if this is six, so we're just going to put a little mark, pencil mark there, and we know that this is already the center there. So let's mark at the three inch line. And then on that three inch line, I want to come in one inch on each side. So let me move over so I can get my pencil in the right spot. Okay, so there's an inch and there's an inch and then we're going to do the same thing on this score line we come in an inch and an inch and now we're basically going to score I can rub out these pencil lines now because I know I don't need those anymore so now we're going to score this diamond and then we're going to cut that one, but make sure you open it back up again. Now the challenge is if trying to score from there to there on your scoreboard is pretty tough, but there's a way that I found that you can mark it. So I have my little embossing mat that goes with my Gemini Junior. And if I put my ruler in there, from pencil mark to pencil mark, take my scoring tool, 
and just kind of lightly. Now it's not a strong score, but it does show up and it does kind of work. And if you go over it a couple times, and basically the, the point of the embossing mat is you just want something that's kind of soft and pliable that'll give a little bit. So when you're scoring and you're pushing in, it gives you that score. I'm going to do all four of them. And just kind of give it a couple good marks. And you just want to go over it, not super hard, but just, you know, and it does help if you have a pretty sturdy card line. So, you know, try to use a, a good crafter's companion card blank or something because uh, if you use too lightweight cardstock, then when you try to score it, it just tears and it doesn't work very well. Okay, so we're done with that. I'm going to get my bone folder out because I'm going to have to use that. And now I can mark out these pencil lines too because I've already got my score lines in there and I don't want to see those pencil marks. Okay, so now, looks like this. I've got this score line. I've got those four score lines. Now i got to cut from here to here, and that's that cut. So, again, you can kind of, actually, um, just kind of put in, well, let me just, I'm just going to use my craft knife and my ruler. Um, although this one doesn't have a metal edge and I'm afraid I'm going to cut my ruler. So let me get a metal edge ruler. Put my craft knife right on that corner and line it up with the other corner. And cut. And it didn't cut all the way through, but that's okay. I find that if I do it lighter and just take multiple passes, I'm less likely to make a mistake. So if you can do it all in one pass, that's great. But if it takes a couple, don't worry about it. But now it's cut. So now let's come back to here so you can see how that folds. So we're going to fold this up. So this is going to go this way, and those are going to go back, and just kind of tease them in. So no, no, that goes down this way, so while this goes this way, that goes that way. And because these didn't get scored on the scoreboard, they're a little bit harder to get to go the way you want to go. So the thing that I found is I put my finger underneath, like my fingernails kind of underneath there, and just kind of tease it in, and then fold this piece up, and same on the other side. Kind of tease that back. And then once you start to get it going, then it does kind of just kind of work on it. Once it starts to go, then it's it's easier. There we go. And once you get it, just kind of give it a little bit of a burnish with your hands. You know, just want to kind of work it. Find a way to, oh, maybe this is the easiest way to burnish this. Flip it over and do this side. There. And there we go. Now, here's the challenge. So that's 
basically the card base all done. Now the challenge is matting and layering. Now you got a couple of options here if you want on the front. I've cut these so that they're this is six by six. This piece is five and three quarters. Get my scoreboard out of the way and I'll show you. So this is five and three quarter by five and three quarter and five and a half by five and a half. Um, actually, I'm going to use my dotty tape pen and I'm just going to put a couple enough tape to kind of hold it a little bit and my dotty tape pen is kind of coming apart but so I'm just going to put like a little dot in each corner just enough to kind of hold it together but that way I can get it apart if I need to so let's go ahead and get this on there get my scoreboard out here so we know this is five and three quarters so we want to go half of five and three quarters like two and seven eighths let's try it here and then we'll see how well i did oh look at that it was pretty close okay so then you know that it was an inch up and an inch in. So you can go, where's my ruler? There it is. So you can go on the back and you say, let's find the halfway point. So if this is five and three quarters, it's like at two and seven eighths. That's the middle. And two and seven eighths, that's the middle. I'll come in an inch from the top. That's right. So there's my one inch line. I actually want to come in a little less than an inch because this is one inch. And so I want some of that white to show. So I'm going to come back about that much. And four and three quarters and then come back about that much and then here on this end I also want to come back not quite an inch about there and then if we connect those lines I should be able to cut that out and it should mat right up. Theoretically, anyway, right? Now, the other way to do it or to, to kind of check it is to put it on there and say, okay, this is going to go on here like that. Or, I guess, yeah, I want it that way. And then you can kind of line it up and you go. Okay, there's my corner, and there's my corner. So that's right there. Oh, I didn't get that one marked. Right there and right there. Right there and right there. And look at that. It actually worked. Okay, so just use my scissors and cut right like that and like that and let's see if it fits right on there it should just because I use my dotty tape pen I can get that off and let's see and it mats almost perfectly now because this one is the same as this one the easiest way to do it is just to 
go like that and make the same cut on the other side if you can cut straight. Just hold it together. And you can use your craft knife and a ruler if you want, as opposed to scissors, but given these strange cuts, I find it's easier to make use of scissors. And set those aside. Now let's glue these. Well, before I glue that up, I'll make just double check and make sure that's gonna fit on there. And yes, it is. It's a little bit off on this side. I'm gonna trim just a little bit more off on that. I don't think I'd cut it straight. Okay, there we go. Now, goes this way, let me glue that up. And this time I am gonna use my wet glue so that I can wiggle them around, get the stuff off the top of the bottle. And because I used just a little tiny dot of that dotty tape pen, especially on this side because it's got kind of that coating or something on it, it just came right off. So let's get that on there. And you can either slide it up so that it's completely flush or you can leave a little bit of that dark paper showing whichever you want to do. I'm going to leave just a tiny bit of the darker paper showing. And then we'll do this side. Okay, there we go. Now, you got to remember one thing. So on this one, you can kind of see right here, because this, this sentiment I've got sort of floating in the middle there, it's on a piece of acetate. And you want to put that acetate in before you glue the mats and layers on so that the acetate's not, because it needs to be on the outside. It can't be on the inside here, but you don't want it showing on the top here. So you want to put it underneath your mat and layer. So let's take a piece of acetate and basically you don't want it the full six, but well, um, I'm going to make it just about half an inch shorter. So about five and a half by about three quarters of an inch wide. So let's cut a piece that's about three quarters of an inch. It doesn't, I mean, you can make it half an inch or three quarters. I mean, you just want enough that you can attach your sentiment to, really. And actually, this is just some of my old packaging, like, you know, that stamps come on. It's not even real acetate because it's going to get covered up anyway. And I can't get it out of there. There it is. And I want to make it, I want to, Make it about five and a half inches long, just so it doesn't stick out of the edge. So you want to glue this on right over that center. Okay. And I'm going to use red liner tape on just, but don't, not in the middle, just on these edges. Okay. So let's put a little bit of red liner tape just on those edges. The first time I did this, I forgot to put the acetate in. I had to peel my mat and layer off and then do it again, which isn't the end of the world, but it wasn't fun. So just a little bit of red liner tape on there on each side. I mean, the nice thing is since we're doing this before you put mats and layers on you're just going to glue it to the edge so it's actually super easy 
and you don't have to like try and get a bow to it or anything. I mean, you're literally going to, I got to get that burnished on there. You're just going to kind of make it essentially flat to the card. So you're going to flatten this out and you're going to put it right over the center, but make sure that that tape, that red liner tape is on the card, not on the cut. And there you go. Now it, see how it bows up when you fold? That's all you need. Now you can put your mats and layers on. I'm going to put mine just like that. And you're just going to put it right over the top of that acetate. Make sure it's good and pressed down. And just line that up. Give it a good mat and layer. And mine, oops, kind of squidged the glue out of that one. And I like that wet glue because I can wiggle it around so I get it till I get it right. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Now, if you want, you can take these little triangles and cut them, you know, in half this way and, and go ahead and mat that. But because just like with this one, I'm going to use that same sentiment and it's pretty big and it covers almost all of it. So I didn't feel like I needed to do that. But if you want to, you can do that, especially if you have a smaller sentiment. But I'm going to use that same happy birthday sentiment. And I'm going to cut the, the happy birthday out of this kind of a light, almost lavenderish pink. It's just sort of, or pinkish purple. It's just a scrap that I had of cardstock. You can use anything you want, just whatever you think matches. And because I didn't want to waste the start cardstock, and this is just going to get covered up on the inside, I'm actually going to cut a square out of that to do my matte layer for my sentiment. Because it won't show because it's going to be covered up with this piece. It's going to be covered up with this piece anyway. So it's good to cut the cardstock, reduce some weight on your card, on your postage, and save the pretty cardstock for what some other use and and this is perfect use for it because i'm just going to use it for the sentiment for the same card so that way you make sure that it, it matches exactly because it's literally the same card stock so let me get that out of there i'll go ahead and mat this on there do the inside and then i'll cut my sentiment and put that on last along with my stopper for my easel I do like the Kalal all-purpose glue. It's uh, my favorite adhesive. I just think it works so well, and it's so easy to use. I use it for almost everything. I used to use the tape pens almost exclusively, and then I, and I was always frustrated because I could never get, nothing was ever straight, and then once you put it down, I couldn't, it was such a strong tape that I couldn't get it back up again. And with this, I can make it, I can put it down and then wiggle it around until I'm happy with where it goes. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and mat and lay the stopper. Now I actually put this on the white because I'm going to put it right over on the edge. And if I just did that, you've got the dark against the dark. So I liked that, 
the white sort of breaking it up. You don't have to do that, but I just, and then I flipped it over and used the so-called B side, the B track or whatever for the stopper. Cause you know, with crafters companion paper pads, the B side always coordinates so well with the front side. See, this is the other reason I like the Kalal glue cause when it squidges out, you just rub it right off and it just comes off like, this kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and we used to put rubber cement on your hands and then peel it off into little balls kind of the same sort of stuff. Oops, that one's going to squidge out probably too because I got a little bit carried away on it. That's okay. Now this one I'm going to put on a foam on foam pads or foam tape or something. I'll find some bigger foam pads. Those are little ones. Those are little ones. Oh, here's some bigger ones. I mean, not big, big, but slightly bigger. And you want to get enough that it's not going to sag. So I know you try to, I try anyway to kind of use them sparingly because otherwise I'm always running out of them. But in this case, you don't want to do that because you want it to be nice and secure on there. And then I do use my tacky glue on my foam pads just to keep it one gives me a little bit of time to adjust if i get it on there wrong and two i think it helps uh, keep it from the foam pads drying out and then so there you go also, that white gives you just that little border between that and that. Now let's do our sentiment. Get my mini down here. You can see my mini is well loved. It's probably time for a new folder, but as long as it works, I just keep using it. And as long as I keep flipping it around, it doesn't get too, too bent up. through just to make sure on the oh there's my birthday there's my happy I probably should have run this through my Xyron before I okay now I want to cut that back layer out of this and cut it so it'll fit in my mini folder This one will also fit right in your mini, but it's a simple design, so I'm just going to run it through once. Cuts perfect. Now we're going to get my happy and my birthday on there, and it goes on just like that. Now. I have found the easiest way to do this. And I know this isn't for everybody. And so if you have sensitive skin, don't do this. But I just take some tacky glue, put on my hand, 
and just kind of touch the die cut where it's really um, thin like that because it's hard to get the even with the little fine tip applicator I have a hard time getting that on there and if you just touch it on your skin you get enough that it sticks but not so much that it makes a mess and it looks like I maybe missed that one little spot so that's where you can take your little fine tip applicator and put one little blob right there and thankfully khaki glue dries so again just try to get all the little loopy pieces and then I will tell you if you do this um, it's I think it's easier to get the extra off your hand after it dries if you try to wipe it off when it's wet it's actually pretty tough to get off it takes a while but if you wait till it dries it just peels off almost in a big sheet and there we go and now we're just going to glue that right onto there and you can do it in one of two ways i think i'm going to put a little piece of red liner tape and then some tacky glue as well so just a a little tiny piece because you don't want much because you just want it attached right there at that end and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to that acetate right there in the middle and then once you get it in the middle now you can put it down but you want to leave it up to find that center and then peel the top layer off Put a little bit of dab of tacky glue on there. And then you're going to put your sentiment, and you just want to center it in there where you want it. Oh, that's pretty good. Stick it on. And we're done. Hope you enjoyed that. I love this card. I just think it's a really fun take on an easel. And I love that the sentiment kind of floats and wiggles. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye.